This story begins when the main character, whose name is Oriana, passes away, and she gets the fairy tale life she has dreamed of since she got engaged to the man of her dreams, and finally, she can feel like a normal person and not a villain who was convicted of betrayal. Now she looks lovingly at her beloved husband who holds her hands gently, thinking about their beautiful future life, closing her eyes and smiling. The protagonist blushed a bit, but in the end, it was just a naive fantasy that she could only dream of. In the next scene, we see the protagonist tied up and kneeling before her husband, crying for her unfulfilled desires. At the same moment, her husband was screaming in her ear that she was an absolute disgrace for selling out her kingdom and she should die like the evil woman she is. Crying, Oriana didn't even know how to react to this and just stared thoughtfully at her ex-husband. At that moment, she realized that in fact, all the crimes she was accused of were actually deliberately arranged by her husband, whose name is Reuben. As she tried to escape, she didn't understand why Reuben had done it or why he would do it at all. Grinning maliciously, the man did not understand how the protagonist could believe that their relationship was actually real, when in fact it was just a political scheme, which scared the girl a lot and she did not even know how to react to it, and honestly a little surprised me too. Reaching out his hand to her and proudly raising his head, Reuben said that because she had committed high treason, he was sentencing her to death. At that moment, she thought that she had never imagined that things could turn out this way, but she knew one thing for sure, and that was that she had been tragically betrayed. Suddenly, she remembered meeting a man with blue hair and a black cloak, who was very surprised that the girl called the Majestic Rose was condemned by her own fiancé, and because of this, the man started laughing loudly. At that moment, the protagonist finally realized that she should not have given in to the temptation of this evil man under any circumstances. But when she realized it was too late, in the meantime, the man abruptly approached and grabbed Oriana's head, not understanding how Reuben could so meanly take advantage of the protagonist's innocence. So he advised her to deal with it as quickly as possible and destroy the man. Raising his head and smirking, he asked the girl if what Reuben had done was unforgivable. Gently touching the face of the girl who was in complete shock at what was happening, the mysterious man asked her if she wanted him to help her deal with her fiancé. However, the girl didn't know what to do, as joining forces with this man could be her biggest mistake yet. In her past life, she was an ordinary office worker. However, her life tragically ended when she was 24 years old when she slipped on the stairs. When she woke up, she didn't even notice the blood on her face. However, she clearly remembered everything that happened to her and even memories from her past life. That day, she was only seven years old and she threw a tantrum because she didn't like the color of the dress her parents gave her and while running, she fell down the stairs. Then she woke up a different person with different memories. She stood up abruptly and ran to the nearest mirror. She analyzed her body in shock, not understanding where she had gotten to and why his hair color and eye color had changed dramatically. Suddenly, she realized that she had been reborn into one of the heroines of a novel called The Kingdom's Flowers, which shocked Oriana greatly. The Kingdom's Flowers is a scented novella that details the battle for the throne. In this story, Oriana in saw the main character of this novel as her enemy and mocked her. In other words, Oriana was a villain. Oriana was born the daughter of a marquis, and her family was one of the three strongest aristocratic families in the kingdom. However, the common people labeled their family as spoiled rotten. Growing up, the heroine suffered unbearable humiliation when Crown Prince Theodore no longer paid attention to her, and his interest shifted to another girl named Mina, who had a low social status. Driven mad by jealousy, Oriana viciously bullied Mina and even tried to kill her leading to the protagonist being stripped of her title of nobility. Enraged by this incident, the protagonist joins forces with the final boss of the story, who plotted a coup, but this only leads to a tragic fate, being beheaded for it. After realizing this, Oriana clenched her fist hard and got angry, and realized that if everything goes according to the plot, she will be dead by the time she turns 19, so she decided that she had to become a better person. When she was only 12 years old, she decided for herself that she didn't want to be a villain anymore. And now, she is a powerful member of high society. Walking around this luxurious palace in her beautiful red dress, 
Oriana caught the eyes of all the ladies who were there and admired her beauty. Also, these women finally realized why the protagonist is called the Majestic Rose of the Kingdom of Pasquier, and she is very beautiful. Staring at her, the woman thought about the fact that Oriana is only very beautiful, but also has excellent swordsmanship. Because one ordinary day, she brilliantly defeated an assassin who tried to kill Crown Prince Theodore. Also, these girls heard somewhere that the main character may even be given the honorary title of Knight in honor of her incredible achievements. In addition, she is the first female knight in her kingdom and how can you not love her for that? Suddenly, Oriana heard someone's familiar voice which told her that she has a lot of fans. Turning around the village, immediately recognized this man as he is Prince Theodore. He is the main character of this novel and is also the crown prince. Also looking at him, Oriana noticed the main character of this novel who is quietly hiding behind the prince her name is Mina, and she stutters as she tries to greet all the guests and the main character. Oriana smiled and explained to the girl that there was no reason for her to worry because she was just trying to get along with her. Hearing this, Mina was a bit taken aback and called this act very kindly. At the same time, the protagonist was looking at a very nervous Mina. She didn't understand why she was so shy since she wasn't even mocking her, and she even started to think that it might be because her face looked like the face of a villain, but in fact, Mina was very happy that Oriana talked to her. In the original story, these two accused the protagonist of crimes she didn't commit, though in fact she is now on very good terms with them, and these two are looking forward to the next encounter with Oriana. Left alone, the protagonist heard a whisper in which some people called her an uncivilized girl. This may be due to the fact that at that moment she stood out a lot, and from this she charged disapproval of a certain group of nobles. However, she cannot do anything about it because in the life of a nobleman, it always happens. Meanwhile, two noblewomen were talking to each other. However, one of them got embarrassed for some reason, which surprised one of the noblewomen a little. And she asked what was wrong, but the girl who was embarrassed said that everything was fine and she should not worry about it. The protagonist smirkingly rejoiced that her operation called becoming a normal person is going smoothly. Abruptly, she began to worry and immediately remembered the face of the man with whom, if she joined forces, she would make a terrible mistake, so she should avoid him by all means. Suddenly, she turned around and saw someone, and she immediately realized who it was. This man turned out to be Prince Dylan. He hasn't shown his face in public for years, and the main character heard somewhere that he is now the lord of the border town of La Spade. He is also the older half-brother of Theodore. In addition, this man is the final boss of the story and a terrible villain who is willing to do the most cruel things imaginable without even blinking an eye, and all to deal with the prince and the heroine. In addition, it is he who leads the protagonist to death after she was condemned. As Oriana pondered, she heard the other nobles discussing Dylan, saying that they did not understand how he could come here when his younger brother had taken away his rights to the throne even though Theodore had commoner blood. In addition, Dylan takes out his frustration by being in a border town and melting and killing those soldiers who invade the kingdom, causing even the rivers of L'Espade to turn red for the blood of those soldiers. This really scares all the nobles, and they didn't even know that Dylan is such a cruel man. Also, the nobles realized that if he wasn't so bloodthirsty, they would want him to become emperor, Plus, they heard other people saying that he was behind the attempted assassination of Theodore. Upon hearing this, the protagonist quietly called these nobles the dogs of the king's specialty. She also thinks that this cynical nobleman and bloodthirsty madman is very lucky to have been born into the family of an emperor. And although his last name is not associated with the younger prince, he is assigned it because of his history. Prince Theodore's mother was a common commoner and became the object of the prince's affection, so he broke off his engagement to Dylan's mother and challenged the other nobles to marry commoners. As soon as she became a princess, she immediately gave birth to Prince Theodore. However, she passed away shortly after. The king, unable to bear it, married his former bride, who was Dylan's mother, and made her the new queen, however. When everyone found out that Dylan's mother gave birth to him and grew up in seclusion, the king was greatly shocked. Because the king loved Theodore's mother so much, he decided to name him his heir and first in line to the throne. 
Soon after the king became too narcissistic, even though Dylan was the first prince, he continued to be mistreated. So because of his hatred for the king, Dylan decided to overthrow him, which led many characters in this story to die. Thus, Dylan this stories. As for the main character, after two years, when she remembered her reincarnation to herself that she would never mess with him again, so the last thing she did was slap him as hard as she could. In addition, she will never forget the tea party that happened that day. Namely, that day Prince Theodore accidentally fell into the lake, and because he couldn't swim, he screamed for help, which shocked the main character a lot. She turned around and asked Dylan to help the prince, but he said no in a calm and cold-blooded voice, even though she begged him to. Touching his face and smirking, the boy replied that if Theodore died, he would be the next king, and nothing would give him more pleasure. Hearing this, Oriana was filled with anger, and she couldn't let the younger prince die, and she just watched it. So she immediately jumped into the water and saved him. When she came out of the water, she immediately hit Dylan hard, yelling at him that she had had enough of his stupid jokes, and letting her own brother die in front of him is pathetic even for him. Also, the girl doesn't understand who in their right mind would swear loyalty to a man like him. The girl turned around and said that Dylan really wasn't worthy to be the next king, and he didn't even have the qualities of a good king, so after what he had just done, she would never be able to accept him again. At the same time, the guy who was lying on the ground could not stand to be bullied by anyone and told Oriana that it was not worth it to be so rude to the first prince of this kingdom. And he also promised that she would pay for it and thus began a terrible relationship between these two characters. The protagonist immediately ran to her father and begged him to teach her how to use the sword, as she feared retribution for that encounter. The consequences, and very fortunate that she had no further contact with this man until she turned 19. In the plot of this novel, the main character is trained as an aide to Prince Theodore, whose name is Reuben Ballador, who was the son of both a duke and a member of one of the three most powerful families in the kingdom. His family was a branch of the Pasquier royal family and served as their closest aides. They also produced prime ministers for several generations. In addition, they were an ancient noble family who were traditionalists, so they disliked the new changes that were taking place in the kingdom because of the king. In the original storyline, the two families were the leaders of each faction, but had a bad relationship with each other. However, because Oriana decided to change her life and start living as a perfect lady, in this life, Reuben has no reason to treat her cruelly. In addition to this, despite being a woman, she was given the nickname of the Majestic Rose and for her ball skills. The fact that she was able to build a cooperative relationship with the Baladu family who respected the old customs and Reuben, which was able to bring together the aristocrats. Though she is a little scared that Prince Dylan didn't plot something for her because of the hard slap she gave him back then, she is now in the restaurant a lot to fear due to her social status and the way she learned swordsmanship that will help her resist most things. So she finally decided that she must avoid her doom as a villain, hello fists, and smiling. She decided that she owed it to herself to become part of the Balladur family that had worked as prime minister for generations. Suddenly, the main character heard some strange sound from behind and the door opened abruptly. Turning around, she saw a crowd of knights who were heading in her direction and shouted to everyone that no one move. Surrounding the girl and not pointing their swords at her, telling her not to move and to go with them, which scared the girl a little, and she didn't even know how to react. And she didn't understand why they wanted her. Outraged, she asked these knights how they dared to direct their chias against her. Without any explanation whatsoever, there is also the old wonder by whom the order was issued the reason for committing such an outrageous act. At that moment, she wanted to quickly draw her sword, which was hidden in her dress, in order to deal with all the knights. But Reuben approached her abruptly, and holding the sword behind her back ordered her to be calm and do what he said, which surprised the girl, as she did not understand what he had to do with it, and what Reuben was talking about at all. Meanwhile, the man took out some document, and showing it to Oriana, he began to explain to her that they should arrest her for suspicion of treason. What's with you on the girl in a daze because all this time, she thought she would take her chance to follow the righteous path. However, she became a villain again this time, just as she had feared. She even got the nickname of the Majestic Rose, and now her fiancé is accusing her of a crime she doesn't even remember committing. 
She tried to explain to everyone that it was actually some kind of mistake and she didn't do anything wrong. However, they didn't. The guards immediately took her head trying to calm her down and yelling at her to stop resisting. Meanwhile, the protagonist could not calm down and looking at her fiancé with her eyes did not understand how this could happen and what is wrong with this world. After some time, Oriana on the hands that were put on shackles were in some luxurious palace, which announced the reason for her arrest. Angry and trying to free her hands, she explained to her fiancé that she had sworn absolute loyalty to the kingdom. And her father was a captain of knights, and she had followed his steps and had devoted herself entirely to the kingdom, so there was no way she could be a spy. Hearing this, one of the guys shouted out that it was very bold for her since they had irrefutable evidence that was in that little box, which made the girl a little embarrassed. At her father's request, the protagonist was in charge of parts of their territory's management. When she was making her rounds one day, she was able to save a merchant who was being attacked by thugs. The merchant looked at the lovely Oriana and thanked her for saving his life. Although he didn't have much to give her, he found a small box that he decided to give her as a token of his gratitude. Seeing this, the heroine appreciated the gesture, but she couldn't accept it. She explained that she was just doing her job, that's all. Upon hearing this, the merchant immediately shouted no, asking the heroine to accept it. But realizing what he had done, he immediately apologized for being so rude and leaving the box to her. He immediately ran away, leaving the girl to reflect on what had just happened with the box in her hands. At that moment, she was stunned by the seller's insistence, so she decided to accept his gift. Look at this little box. She was a little surprised since the jewelry adorning it could only be found in glass veil. Back to Oriana, who kneels before the knights who explain to her why she is guilty and a spy, they start by saying that the jewels adorning this box can only be found in glass veil because they are so rare it is definitely forbidden to export these gems and they cannot be obtained in Pasquier. Also, the man explained that they confiscated this item from her bedroom. At first, they thought it was just a box of jewelry. However, as they continued to investigate, they found a fake double bottom with enough room to store secret documents. Upon hearing this, the protagonist is left in shock because she was probably put. Fearing retribution from Prince Dylan after the incident at the tea party, Oriana began to carry the sword with her at all times to protect herself. Plus, she spent most of her free time learning swordsmanship and devoted herself to it. So there is no way she could be interested in jewelry like some ordinary rich girl. Jewelry would have been heavy and burdensome during the time when she was learning swordsmanship. Besides, back then, she didn't even know anything about gemstones. Oriana was very scared and in her thoughts thought that there was actually some mistake. However, in the end, it was the result of her own negligence. However, only a couple of people knew that even she knew nothing about these gems, and those people were only her parents and the maids in their estate. But that's not all. And another person who knew about these gems was her fiancé, Reuben, who approached the girl and arrogantly looked at her and asked her if she had become so arrogant because everyone started to... Shouting at her fiancé, the protagonist tried to find out why he was doing all this. She also remembered that she had only recently become known as the Majestic Rose, even though her reputation had been terrible a couple years ago. She remembers how she used to walk around her estate, and the knights arrogantly looked at her saying that, although her father is a good man, Oriana causes a lot of trouble. Besides, it had never happened before in history that a woman had taken a sword in her hand and the nobles were vehemently against it. As she walked by those knights, she was ready to be criticized, but she already thought that she was only being very naive. Suddenly the heroine stopped and heard a man add that they had heard somewhere from a man who had danced with her that holding her hands was like holding a man's hands because her hands were very masculine and rough, and they thought it was very demeaning for a girl like her to do that. Suddenly, the protagonist heard a familiar voice. It was Reuben, who sharply approached the knights and began to explain to them that although they think that Oriana is strange, they will never defeat her. Turning around, the heroine immediately called the guy by name, to which the guy replied that she is the one who chose this path, so she does not need to turn away from him, then turning around, the man immediately left, saying that there is nothing more shameful, which slightly shocked the girl. Because Reuben was a traditionalist, he was probably against the protagonist learning fencing, but he did recognize her efforts. 
Back to Oriana kneeling in front of her fiancé in complete misunderstanding. I mean that all this time she thought her fiancé was different from the others. Meanwhile, Ruben smirkingly explained to the girl that he couldn't really understand how she could believe that their relationship was more than just a political scheme. Back the girl is really stupid. Also, the man stated that he was certainly going to break off the engagement soon. At that moment, the girl did not send thinking that she thought that they would support each other and be together for the rest of their lives. However, now she believes that there was most likely only one who dreamed about it. She stood up abruptly and shouted Ruben's name, unable to contain her emotions any longer. At that moment, Ruben advised the protagonist to calm down if she valued the lives of her parents. He also advised her not to do anything reckless as their lives were in her hands, which shocked the girl even more, and she asked him in a trembling voice what he was going to do to them. Then the man, slowly approaching the girl's ear, replied that she was a total disgrace, explaining that she had sold her kingdom and simply had to die like the wicked woman she was. And so we come back to the moment from the beginning where Reuben points his hand at his former fiance and accuses her of treason and sentences her to death. The royalist then issued a formal censure on the grounds of insufficient evidence, which led to all charges being dropped and the death penalty being dropped, but she was still sent to the abbey. Sitting behind bars, Oriana cried thinking that during her life she had caused so much trouble to so many people, so she hated herself that she was spared. After all the charges were dropped, her parents also had to release her from custody. However, her mother and father were still under house arrest and surveillance, under the pretext that they were suspected of plotting a rebellion. Holding on to her dress, the heroine felt helpless and cowardly, but there was nothing she could do about the situation and her parents believed in her and used everything they could to clear her name, which shows how they weren't worried about not being able to hold on to their positions. Oriana began to remember those wonderful moments when her parents gave her gifts, namely one of the days they gave her a beautiful sword that immediately liked the heroine. The sympathetic mother bowed her head down and said that she had actually planned to convince the protagonist to give up fencing because she thought that the girl could not do it. But after seeing the persistence and determination of the protagonist, the mother could not let it go and decided to accept her as she was. She also added that her daughter was becoming more beautiful and stronger every day, so she decided to support her. Also, her parents are sure that now she will be able to protect herself and a lot of other innocent lives. Remembering this, the protagonist could not hold back her tears and became even more upset Suddenly raising her head, she saw two knights who ordered her to get up as it was time to take her to the abbey. Coming out of her dungeon, the protagonist was forced to listen to the giggles and whispers of people who looked at her and did not understand how such a shabby girl can have the nickname of the Majestic Rose and generally be from high society. Now they thought that her reputation to sing not on the blood and it would be better to call her a bloody rose with which the rest of the nobles agreed. Among those nobles was the fiancé of Prince Theodore, who could not calmly look at how the oil girl was taken away to some unknown place. She was forced to watch how these cruel knights forced the heroine to sit in some unknown carriage under the river of angry commoners, who threw at her everything that was at hand, her different words. They also said that they believed in her calling her majestic as they all believed in her, However, they now regretted because they praised her without even knowing how bad a person she was. The guards tried to protect her from the angry crowd of people shouting at them to stay away, or they would be imprisoned with her. At the same time, Oriana not only fell from grace, but also tarnished the good name of her parents and the entire Emmanuel family. Angry, she realized that still she cannot do anything. After a while, the heroine was already in a carriage that took her to some unknown direction, the driver told the girl that ahead of them, they are waiting for a rough road, so if she feels bad, she should notify the driver. In fact, the driver was a nice old man with white hair, and he seemed very kind to the girl. Bowing her head down, the heroine realized that even though she had lost her status and reputation, she still had her hands full. Plus, she wasn't quite sure what Reuben was going to do, but the honor of the Emmanuel family, as well as the defenders of the kingdom, was at stake. So the heroine promised herself that she wouldn't let such an injustice go unpunished. Suddenly, in front of the carriage appeared some unknown man 
in a black cloak with some iron whip, which pointed immediately at the carriage of the heroes, because of which their carriage immediately turned over. After gathering her strength and crawling out of the overturned carriage, Oriana was completely bewildered and did not understand what had just happened and why the carriage had overturned at all. In a second, she was immediately surrounded by three unknown men in black cloaks who were happy that the majestic Rose had invented you. They also immediately apologized for such rude treatment, explaining that many people do not stop if you just ask them to stop. One of these unknown saviors was some man with black blonde hair and large scars all over his body who looked at the heroine with a puzzled look who asked them who they were. Bowing his head and exhaling, the man smirked and asked the girl if she would recognize who he was, if he explained to her that her fiancé had actually put him up to it, which shocked the girl and even scared her. After a second, the man sharply approached the protagonist and gently touching her body, said that his orders were to go and deal with this stubborn, majestic rose so that she could never get up again. However, the heroine could not tolerate such an attitude and immediately gave a powerful slap to this scoundrel that he should not dare to touch her. She also said that if someone would be rough with her, he had better be prepared for the consequences. At that moment, the stranger started laughing loudly, calling the girl a poor girl, and was about to hit her, saying that even if she could fence well, it wouldn't help her now as her hands were tied, which frightened the girl even more, and she started crying. But now let's go back to the events that happened up to this point. Namely, one day Reuben was holding some sword in his hands, listening to someone telling him that he had a report for him. Namely, in accordance with his orders, the stranger appointed shadows and sent the hounds on their way. Reuben praised the man in the cloak, telling him to get on with his work. This stranger turned out to be some young man who decided to explain to his lord that he didn't think hounds was up to the job, which needed to be done in the utmost secrecy. The hounds were actually the men of the very stranger who was about to strike our protagonist. The young man went on to explain that even though they have a superior sense of hearing and smell, they tend to make their prey a plaything to the point where they leave behind large traces of their activities. The young man also added that if the traditionalists learned of this attack, their position would be in a very bad state, to which Reuben Cloth in his head replied that it was no problem at all for them. The young man did not stop and tried to explain to his lord once again what the problem was, but Reuben replied that without the Emmanuel family, the traditionalists would just be a disorderly mob. Also, Crown Prince Theodore would no longer be able to command the remaining forces, which would make them very easy to manipulate. Reuben also stated that the only problem they may face is that man, and now he's probably referring to Dylan. However, the only thing he's happy about is that he's staying out of politics for now, so it's safest to leave the main character useless for now, and that's why he's still holding on to hounds. Now back to Oriana, who kneels before the man with the huge scars and remembers her fiancé telling her all this, but her heart has a hard time accepting it all. Her engagement to Reuben was arranged by the king himself to smooth over the differences between their families, and their families were not at all happy about being forced to marry, also, the protagonist's parents advised her to avoid interfering in his affairs as much as possible, and neither of them were happy about it. Their relationship was just to create the appearance. However, their relationship was bad from the beginning, and when they first got married, her fiancé always helped her and understood her feelings. One day when Oriana was standing quietly next to some tree, all the other two of them started laughing at her saying that she shouldn't be fencing and only Reuben was able to get her out of that situation by taking her hands and starting to walk away from that place. Upon seeing this, the protagonist was immediately frightened, explaining to her fiancé that if his father saw him holding her hand, he would be very angry. At that moment, Oriana realized that she was actually a weak-willed, fragile human being, and if she had lived her life alone, she would have ruined it long ago. Kept her fiancé just wanted to become as strong and noble as he was. She admired him, and all she wanted to do was help him, so she dedicated her whole heart to him. Taking his blade in his hands, the mysterious man was about to deal with our heroine saying that she looked very good, and he was sorry at times like this that his eyesight was so bad. It was rumored that the Balador family, who had no military qualities, hired a private army they called Shadows, who were children, they raised as infants to do the dirty work they could not reveal publicly. 
The man laughingly stated that the main character walks around looking menacing. She is just a horrible, quiet little lady. Oriana couldn't take any more mockery of herself, so she sharply struck this rascal right in the woods and the blow was so strong that his blade fell out of his hands. The girl then started beating the rascal until he fell to the ground, which left the other men shocked as well. Oriana could not just stand by and watch, especially when she was betrayed and made a laughing stock. The girl immediately started running away from the men, but they saw and realized what had just happened and started chasing after her. However, the scarred man immediately stopped them and said that if anyone allowed her to be touched, he would immediately pay for it, as it was his prey. Laughing evilly, he started to like it as he thinks that this is how hunting should be. He also gave our heroine 10 seconds to escape as far as possible. Meanwhile, Oriana was running as hard as she could and realized that there was no way she could outrun him, so she decided on a different strategy. The scarred man explored the forest hoping to find the girl, but he couldn't find her, even by following the path she was running, so he thought she had decided to give up running and play hide and seek after all. In the other noticed something strange behind a tree very similar to her dress, so he immediately thought that she was hiding there. But looking, he realized that in fact, it was just a stick stuck in the ground on which was part of her dress. Suddenly our heroine appeared behind the man with a blade in her hands and immediately threw the wood at him, preparing to deal with him once and for all. However, he is as weak as she initially thought and sharply turned around and grabbed Oriana by the throat. Laughing, the man started calling the girl a laughing stock because her plan didn't work. He also explained to her that he could hear her heartbeat from a mile away. Meanwhile, the heroine who realized that her plan had worked didn't even know what to do. Also because the man was holding her legs, she couldn't attack him like she had done before. So she didn't even know what to do. Approaching the frightened girl, the man stated that she had good skin and a nice voice. Also, he liked her fighting spirit so he would have a lot of fun playing with her. The heroine was about to say something to him, but the man interrupted her, saying that she shouldn't be scared because he wasn't going to kill her or do anything bad to her. Laughing wickedly, he added that all he was going to do was attack her, torture her, and rape her until her mind was destroyed. His cruel hands began to slide down her leg, lifting her dress as the girl listened to the two of them having a lot of fun. Oriana tried to get out of his grip, but she couldn't, and all she wanted was for her hands not to be tied. Suddenly, there was a loud sound that made the man immediately start holding his head because his ears were hurting. As it turned out, it was a gunshot. Looking in the direction of the protagonist saw some mysterious man in a raincoat, which was heading to the villain to deal with it. As it turned out, it was Dylan who came to Oriana's rescue and immediately started fighting after a couple of seconds as he appeared. He immediately drove his blade into the villain's back and whispered in his ear that he was ashamed that he had interfered at the worst possible moment and he himself had business with the lady. Then he finally dealt with the scoundrel and had a wonderful time in hell. Looking at our heroine Dylan that right now she looks like a very fragile girl, also, he wondered where is her courage that she had when she slapped him hard. Meanwhile, Oriana, looking at her savior, didn't understand what he was doing here now. Also, the girl was very happy that she was finally saved. And she started to think that if this is really her destiny, then the gods must be really cruel. When he approached the girl, the man immediately greeted her and asked her how she was doing. He also started touching her body gently and called her poor thing. At that moment, Oriana did not understand what to do as Dylan is the main villain of the story. He put his hand on the girl's face and asked her how Reuben dared to take advantage of her loyalty. Looking her savior straight in the eyes, the protagonist realized that she should never give in to this temptation. Dylan gently touched the girl's face and offered to help her deal with her already fiance, if she wanted to, of course. Dylan immediately began to help the girl get her hands out of the shackles since he had the key. He also believed that the shadows felt that the certainty that they would deal with her was greater than the certainty that they would let her go free, and he added that reinforcements were on their way. At the same time, Dylan came here with his subordinate, who was fighting the rest of the mercenaries right now and keeping them busy. Smiling, the man asked the girl if she had finally realized what a stupid decision it was. He also realizes that she is probably very afraid of him right now, but if she wants to have any chance of survival, she needs to trust him and join forces with him. 
In addition, while Dylan was looking for the key to her handcuffs, luckily he found her sword. So he wondered if the girl still knew how to fight. Oriana tilted her head down and answered that she didn't see any point in living anymore, which surprised the man a little. She started to explain that it was even ridiculous, as she thought to start a new life from the beginning, and she did everything possible to achieve it, but in fact it was all useless, and she could not change her destiny in any way. She also realized that it wasn't actually her fiancé who came to save her, but Dylan, the cowardly villain. Oriana didn't even realize until then that she had been shunned, and she had trusted her fiancé for 12 years, but now she thought she was stupid. Crying hard, the girl wished she had never met Reuben before and he would never have broken her heart. Dylan also bent his head down and asked the girl if she knew how many people cared about not trampling on the grass and flowers, which surprised the girl a little because she couldn't understand what the guy was talking about. Dylan started to explain to her that he meant that a lot of people live their lives without even thinking about things. Taking from the ground a clover with four leaves, the man began to explain to the girl that she should not worry about such trifles and should go on with her life. Taking gently her hand, he put this clover on her hand and left saying that she is a majestic rose and is more beautiful than any other flower that blooms in this country, so she should not sit here and wither. Hearing these words, the heroine was shocked and even a little sympathetic, bowing her head down. She listened as Dylan told her that they had already been talking too long and he should take care of the rest of the shadows. Also pulling out his sword, he added that if what he hadn't told her wasn't enough, she could just stay here and hide out as long as she wanted without worrying about being attacked since it was his gentlemanly job to protect her. The man then immediately ran to his allies to help them leaving the protagonist alone with piss clippers in her hands. Then Oriana realized that she never again wanted to feel as miserable as she did now. Also, the protagonist remembered how every six months in her past life, her family and her went on day trips together. This one person, how she moved for work. One of the days when our heroine was working as usual and chatting on the phone with her mother, she was daily giving up traveling with her parents. Instead, she was very busy with her work. However, she was looking forward to another time to meet her family. Smiling, she promised her mother that everything would be all right and she wouldn't work for too long. She didn't really have a father since he died when she was very young and she didn't even remember him. She only knows what he looks like from pictures, so her mother raised her alone. In addition, once she graduated from high school, her brother worked hard to pay for her college tuition. The brother was thrilled that his sister was able to get a good job, so happy that someone thought he was the one who got the job. He also gave her a fountain pen as a congratulatory gift. Crossing her arms, Oriana remembered how some time ago she was in the office of her boss who was yelling at his subordinates, telling them that they should manage this project better, because of which our heroine had to apologize. Although she was lucky to get out of there without any trouble, she thinks that she really should apologize to her colleague because she was the reason why they were yelled at because she didn't prepare the documents properly. When she arrived home in the evening, she was a little surprised to see that her brother's car wasn't there, which was a little strange since he should be home by now. When she took out her phone, she saw a message from him telling her to come to her mother's house when she was done with work. Sometime later, the police contacted our village and informed her that her mother and brother's car had been hit by falling rocks, leaving the girl in complete shock. Although she thinks it was an accident and just bad luck, she assumes that if she had been traveling with them, this would not have happened. After a while, go back to work, heroine met her co-workers who started to bully her and throw away her documents, say that she will not even say a word about it, so they should not worry, which was very cruel. Oriana couldn't hold back her emotions and pushed one of her colleagues, crying hard at the same time. However, the man was much stronger than the fragile girl and threw her back because of which the girl with all her belongings, including the book about our story, fell on the stairs. And unfortunately, our heroine died in the real world. Now back to Oriana, who is sitting in a tree and holding her sword in her hands, looking at Dylan and his partner, who are fighting the shadows. Looking to the side, the protagonist sees the coachman she was in, lying under a tree and trying to curry favor with one of the shadows, telling him that he has a wife and children and he doesn't want to die at all. The girl immediately remembered how the old man took care of the girl and asked her to tell him if she needed anything. To us, 
that the girl replied that she would be punished if he talked to her, so she advised him to just concentrate on his duties. However, Coachman gently put his hands on the girl's hands and replied that long ago our heroine saved his child's life, so he is indebted to her. He also added that he was just a plain old man and he didn't understand much, so all he asked was to be allowed to be at her service, even if it was on the road to the abbey. Oriana couldn't bear to see the rascals bullying the helpless old man, so she immediately rushed to his aid, while Dylan and his partner dealt with the rest of the villains. Laughing, the man was a little tired, so they decided to take a couple seconds to rest. Suddenly, Dylan noticed an assailant rushing at him, but our hero was able to deal with him quickly, saying that even if Oriana is a master swordsman, he can confidently say that such a number of assassins is too much even for her. But in fact, it was just a decoy, and another man attacked him from behind. When Dylan thought that everything and his story would end, there appeared our protagonist, who with her skillful actions could not repel the attacker's attack and knocked him out. Oriana, standing in front of Dylan, answered him that before the one who talks so much, he certainly does not have the skills to back it up. To which the man agreed saying that he can't argue with that, and unfortunately, he is a great intellectual. At that moment, the protagonist promised herself that she would not lose to such fools again, so she could protect those she really cared about so that they would live another day. And that's why she picked up her sword. As she prepared to attack, the protagonist replied that she wasn't doing it for her ex-fiance or Dylan, but for herself, and now these assassins strong her spilled over. Suddenly, our story shifts to the tale of a foolish priest who, without doing his research, invited a traveling entertainer to entertain members of high society. However, the real person is the infamous rebel who intended to associate with the royal family of Pasquier. However, he was thwarted by our protagonist who was supported by the people and was nicknamed the Majestic Rose. She was able to protect Prince Theodore the Assassin and was subsequently known by nobles and ordinary commoners alike as the Bloody Rose. However, there was one well-hidden fact. There was actually not just one assassin disguised as a traveling artist, but a whole group of 23 people, and Oriana was able to deal with all of these alone. Then with a smile on her face and drenched in blood, she asked if everyone was okay, and that's where her nickname came from. Meanwhile, the man with a look of surprise on his face looked at our heroine, who was using all her swordsmanship skills to deal with all the assassins without giving them a chance to win. She was shining with fire, proudly blooming in all her crimson splendor. Dylan trembling couldn't even imagine that our heroine was so magnificent, and now he actually recognized who she was. Standing in front of the lying assassins, covered in blood, Oriana realized that none of the assassins had trained well enough, so she advised them to come with the whole army the next time they tried to take her life. Meanwhile, Dylan was just shocked by what he saw, and began to remember moments from his childhood where the main character was just as arrogantly gorgeous. He began to shiver even more and even sweat a little, calling her feet amazing. Meanwhile, Oriana, in her bloody dress, approached the coachman and offered to help him up, to which the shy old man immediately agreed and thanked the girl. Dylan, looking at all this, could not but praise the girl and immediately said that he had certainly underestimated her. He also added that for a moment, he wasn't sure what was going to happen. But the man now believed that the heroine could really live up to her reputation. Suddenly, Oriana immediately pointed her sword at the man, which scared him a bit. But the prince shading to his ball replied that she should not raise her sword at the prince. Also, he thinks that the protagonist does not fully understand what it could mean. However, Oriana angrily replied that she is not angry at him as a prince. She sits on him as a person. Clutching her blood sword, she added that she is very grateful that he saved her, but she does not approve of the way the prince uses people as his pawns. Hearing this, Dylan approaching the girl and gently touching her chin, replied that in that case, she should continue to protect them as she had just done, which left the girl a bit stunned. Smiling, the prince added that he wasn't going to stop her from saving anyone. Stop. And that's the only reason she needed her sword. Upon hearing this, everything happened just as the protagonist had envisioned. Namely, the prince deliberately left the coachman to be attacked in order to light a fire in her. Shouting at the prince, 
Oriana was highly displeased that the prince did not value the lives of ordinary people at all, at the same time as the old man tried to stop the lady. Dylan raised his hand and immediately replied that if the protagonist didn't approve of his behavior, he thought it would be more comfortable for her to stay by his side, adding that if the heroine would watch herself, there would certainly be fewer victims, which left the girl even more stunned. She didn't even know how to respond to that. She didn't understand the logic behind it, and his petty attitude pissed her off every time. She tried to explain to Dylan that she was just trying to convince him to stop putting people in danger. Suddenly looking in the direction of the heroine immediately saw the partner who held the coachman hostage, pointing his sword in his direction. She was very frightened by this and immediately tried to stop him, but not even having time to approach the old man, Dylan, was for her ready to immediately cut off her head. Laughing, he stated that the girl should not have taken her eyes off her target. He also added that he didn't mind stripping her when you for betraying her and dealing with the old man to silence him right here and now. However, the reasons he hasn't done it yet is because he wants to see how the bloody rose was made for himself. He whispered softly in the girl's ear that he adored obedient creatures, so he'd like to hear a rapturous response from her. In that moment of reflection, the protagonist decided to herself that she had no intentions of doing anything, and she wanted to know how rotten this Dylan could be. And all she did was call him a scumbag. Hearing this, the man immediately began to smile, saying that he was honored to hear such a compliment from her, and standing in front of her, he said that though she might think him a bastard, he thought that he and she were very compatible, which surprised the girl even more, and she began to think that she had no ethics or morals. Pressing the girl against him and touching her sword and face, the prince promised her that he would make her a majestic rose, that she would bloom more beautifully than anyone else. Oriana was a little surprised by his actions, but she perfectly understood that if she joined forces with him, there could become her own. But of course, she realizes that she needs his strength in order to punish Reuben. Suddenly, the heroine grabbed Dylan by the tie, which surprised the guy a bit. He was explaining to her that his level of obedience would depend on her behavior. The girl replied that a rose can't choose who gets pierced by thorns, so she advised him to be careful not to be enchanted by them. Hearing this, the prince immediately started laughing loudly, saying that it scared him a lot, which made the girl even more angry. Suddenly, the man put his hand on the girl's face and replied that he had long been enchanted and he would be honored to be killed by her, which left the girl in a complete stupor and she did not even know how to respond. After a little thinking, she asked the prince to stop teasing her, which made Dylan laugh even more, and he said that now their problem was solved, and after all, he was the greatest. Back to the old man, our hero asked him to take them back to the mansion, adding that he would pay him well for it, which the coachman could not but agree to. At the same time, Oriana was a little surprised by the prince's politeness, and she couldn't understand why he hadn't acted that way from the beginning. Confused, as the girl expected from a destroyer prince, his audacity is unprecedented. She also accepted the fact that if her destiny is to be destroyed, she is not ready to accept it. Proudly raising her head up, she finally accepted the fact that from now on she too is a villain, and she will destroy anyone who gets in her way. Now the actions of our story are transferred to the next day, where our heroine is in some luxurious palace, where Dylan, showing his hand, asked the girl to come in and not to be shy. At that moment, Dylan perfectly realized that he took full control over the situation, but she had no other choice. When she entered the room, she was immediately met by two maids, whose names were Sierra and Roca, and they were twins. When the protagonist looked at them, she immediately realized that they were twin maids, and in the original story, they were assassins. Oriana started to get worried and even assumed that the prince was planning this all on purpose, using these maids to deal with her. While she was thinking about how to prevent her demise, Dylan smilingly stated that the first thing they should do now was to deal with our heroine's appearance, which surprised her a bit. The man also said that the twins would take care of her, which scared the girl a little, as she didn't want the assassins to take care of her. Before she could even think it through, Dylan snatched the sword out of her hands and left, 
saying that she didn't need it for the time being. After a moment, Oriana was approached by one of the twins, who smilingly offered to show her the way. Following the maids, the protagonist realized that now she must stay calm, as the prince will get nothing if he ends her right now. Also, the heroine remembered how, in the original story, after she was executed, Prince Dylan uses her body to fertilize his garden, so if she is not extremely careful, this fate may await her as well. So she has to be on guard to be able to deal with anything she meets on her way. Also, she has promised herself that she will not let anyone deal with her so easily. Going into the bathroom, our Gure he her immediately expected a hot bath with rose petals, which the maids specially prepared for her, which just surprised the girl. In addition, the maids treated her very well, that even more shocked her. Unable to calm down and relax, the heroine realized that she was expected with great anticipation. She also realized what she had to do, as she was not expecting absolute luxury. The heroine even began to slowly go crazy, thinking that it was actually a trap that the prince had prepared for her to let her guard down. After a while, when the maids were helping the heroine to put on a beautiful red dress, she asked one of the maids why the dress fit her like a glove. Roka, smiling, replied that she had been ordered to follow orders only and not to answer any questions other than inquiries, and she apologized to the girl. Hearing this, the heroine was a bit surprised as she realized that she had no choice but to wear this uncomfortable dress. Entering the room of the prince, the heroine immediately apologized to him for the fact that she took so long to dress up, to which the man replied that there was nothing wrong with it, and besides, she came even earlier than he expected. Dylan was also surprised by Oriana's beauty and he couldn't take his eyes off of her. When she noticed this, the girl immediately started to feel uncomfortable and asked the man to stop staring at her and say something. She also sarcastically asked him if this was the dress he had prepared for her. That made the prince a little embarrassed. However, he immediately apologized and said that it looked beautiful on her and now no wonder why she was called the Majestic Rose. He also asked the girl to sit down Sitting at the table with a cup of tea, the man stated that Oriana was a rather intelligent girl, so he was confident that she had already realized what was really going on, and it was the principal who intervened and forced them to cancel her mortal negotiations. Hearing this, the protagonist wasn't even surprised and thought it seemed obvious, but now she finally understood why everything was already prepared for her, and she thanked him for it. For Dylan starts to explain to the girl that she was attacked by Balladur's private soldiers, which they call Shadows. And they, in turn, are led by Farvali, a former knight who served in the Royal Knights Brigade. However, he was dismissed from the knights after his eyesight was impaired due to an injury, embittered. He brutally murdered 51 members of his former unit and their families, resulting in a death sentence. Upon hearing this, the protagonist immediately stated that she had never heard of this before, and she also suggested that if so many people were killed by him, it would certainly cause a huge commotion, to which the prince agreed. If the Emmanuel family, sworn to protect the royal family as knights, is the light of the kingdom, then the Balladur family is the darkness of the kingdom and their role in this kingdom is to secretly deal with problems that might threaten the prestige of the royal family, such as those caused by the hounds. Reuben Balador plays the role of Theodore's loyal right-hand man, but he actually takes those criminals he promised to deal with, and instead grooms them into his family's common soldiers in an attempt to expand his power. He took advantage of the imbalance of power in the palace when the king was ill, and took action to eliminate the Emmanuel family to seize real power for himself, and that's what caused all this to happen to the main character. Oriana was shocked by what she heard and didn't even know how to react. She also finally realized that she had been on Reuben's side all along, and if she had discovered it earlier, she would have been able to stop him, and her parents wouldn't have been in danger. The man then added that this is why he wants to teach those who have forgotten their place a lesson, and he saved our heroine because he thought they could work together. In addition, the prince added that he simply hates the man, so he wants to do everything he can to disappoint him. Plus, he was the one who took Dylan to La Spade after all. Although the main character and the prince may have different feelings and ideals, they have the same goals. So the prince thinks that the two of them will get along very well. Even though Prince Dylan was the oldest prince, he was conceived and born out of wedlock. 
Because Theodore was born to the queen, he was named the rightful heir, even though he was the second prince. <laughs>